Namaste, Uncle, Auntie. Let me share a joke with you guys before I start this program. President Ali Teka, Headmaster, and Meki, Minister in charge of the most important ministry to run our oil, our gold, our timber, our manganese, our bauxite industries, a US trillion dollar business. And then take a young man who left parliament and went to study oil and gas in England for two years and make that man a minister for sports. <laughs> Oh, if you don't laugh, Uncle, I'm, I'm still laughing at that. And just in case you don't want to laugh at that, let me give you an next one. <laughs> I'm sure this one will make you smile or laugh. President Ali Teka, a man who failed at everything he put his hands on. And said, you in charge of the oil industry. I ain't calling no name. <laughs> By now, everybody know who he is. Namaste, guys. Namaste. Thank you for falling in. Uncle, when I came off the radio program Friday night, a man said, Glenn, when will you remove, or when will they remove Jack Dale from that office for his incompetency and mismanagement of our resources? Right away, Joshua, I realized that my program was not clear to him. And maybe not very clear to many others who listened Friday night. He did not understand that the 214 million US I talked about had nothing to do with incompetence or mismanagement in the oil sector. It was about someone who wanted to huff out. Yes, half out 200 million U.S., plain and simple. So tonight, I want to go a little deeper into that Nancy story. Vikram Bharat and Bharat Jagde wants us to believe that the ministry workers went on their own to ExxonMobil and reduced 214 million U.S. to 3 million. I simplified this issue in a TikTok the very next day that I don't want to speak it to you people. I just want to play that TikTok for you to hear. Joshua, please play it. While Exxon Hunchin Guyana billions of US, somebody in the government trying to make a hustle at the side and all of you busy behind cricket. A British company and GRA found Exxon Hunch Guyana 214 million US during the 1.6 exploration audit. Jack Day at a press conference said Exxon have to pay that 214. At another press conference, he said the ministry tell him that the 214 was reduced to 11, then to 3. A GRA letter leaked to the press disputed the reduction of that 214 by the ministry. Listen to what Jack Dale has to say when my reporter cornered him on this issue. I'm not sure if you've seen this report by Starbrook News where they did a story on a letter by the Commissioner General, Godfrey Stacia, uh, saying that he has no objection to the 214 million. However, uh, you had said at a previous press conference that that sum had already come down to 11 million, and then it was subsequently uh, revealed during my own findings that that was even broken down to 3 million. Could you clarify, provide some clarity on where that letter sort of uh, came from, and is it something dated? No. I've had this engagement again with the ministry. And let me, let me say this. Uh, this matter should have been closed 
earlier. So I thought that GRA was dealing with this matter totally because that is what we said, the GRA should deal with the issue of audit. They should have a final say at the technical level. I was reluctant to even speak about it because I said it's being handled technically. So what happened, I, I discovered that the GRA wrote the ministry and said that they ought twice to say we were not part of this audit so we can't comment too much on the 214 million. And then finally they wrote back saying that we notwithstanding given the passage of time that this was in August of this year let's close this at 214 million. The ministry directly engaged in a discussion with ExxonMobil on the 214 million after the GRA had said this was the end of the matter. So as far as I'm concerned, Notwithstanding what I said before, that was the ministry's position. I made it clear to them that I'm accepting the GRA's position. The GRA's position, because that was their position they, that, that this matter, because they engage in a further discussion with Exxon after the GRA had recommended closing the audit. And that should not have happened. You heard him. That should not have happened. And then said he was reluctant to speak about the 214 million US that Exxon rob us in a country that is borrowing two and three million US to feed its people. Anything smelling here? <laughs> Then hours after that press conference, the headmaster, Vikram Bharathuton oil minister said, his staff went behind his back and jagged their back and do their own thing with Exxon and that they were instructed not to ever speak back to Exxon. <laughs> oh, 214 million US reduced to 3 million. Barat Jagdeo made two statements about it. Now after one month, when the press catch them up, we are told the staff did it behind them backs and that them na know. Me na got nothing more for say. But the PNC, a call for Jagdeo to be removed from the oil sector. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta laugh. I gotta laugh with a man who laughing there just now. You know, to see the government official. Hmm? Them in no dear dear ministry people been and cut down two hundred and fourteen million US to three million. In a starving country like this, we're begging and borrowing. We're begging and borrowing two, three million to feed its citizens. How you like that, Joshua? DJ? Yeah. That story was, well, Jack Dave said it in the public. It was published in the newspapers, on the television, all over the news. And the headmaster didn't see it to verify, to check, or to review, or to ask what's going on. When this story busts out, <laughs> then they might try to come out with a hoogly poogly story for tell Guyana. <laughs> DJ, no should these two men stay one more day in office? No, hmm? no. <laughs> God, you better come quick and come quick. Josh.
DJ, let's get going. Exxon Mobil is doing their public consultation for a sixth oil project, which this super bright man, Jack Dale, is hell-bent on handling them without securing Guyana, our future, with full protection from an oil spill. Now, you guys got to hear this carefully. At the Exxon first public meeting at Lenora on the west coast of Demerara last week, a man asked Exxon if full protection from an oil spill will be handed to Guyana for this sixth project they want. Uncle and auntie, hear what the manager from Exxon told that Guyanese and the people sitting at that audience. An oil spill can run oil companies bankrupt. You hear that, guys? From Exxon Mobil owns mouth. Oil spill can bankrupt them company. That is worth hundreds of billions of American dollars. <laughs> Guyana doesn't even have one billion in our bank account. Matter of fact, we owe four billion to foreign banks without an oil spill, brother. Imagine if one of them pipe bus out there. Where does that leave me, you, and the rest of the Guyanese people? You got an idea? Let me tell you what will become of the Guyanese people. We will have to eat from the rubbish bins and sleep in the graveyards without full protection. Joshua, mm -hmm. could you believe Exxon Mobil come here taking billions of US dollars in our oil every couple mornings free and is bent or not protecting any one of us, the owners of that oil? Anyone here want those people in this country? They are protecting their companies, their bank books, their shareholders' livelihood, and their future. Who protecting our pockets, your livelihoods, and your future, Uncle and Auntie. These three chaps we have in Guyana. Jack Dale Norton and President Ali. Is going to hand the sixth project on a platter. To Exxon. For them to bury us alive. When an oil spill happen. While Exxon. Protecting. And safeguarding their interests at all costs to the detriment of every Guyanese. And when Justice Kisun order full protection for Guyana and the Guyanese people, that brilliant man Bara Jagdeo appealed the judge's ruling. Our Vice President, Uncle and Auntie, is willing to protect and safeguard Exxon and their shareholders from going bankrupt, but not Guyana and the Guyanese people. God bless you people. And may he give us fresh air to breathe when an oil spill occurs out there. I don't talk, uncle. Guys, I don't talk about full protection from the oil projects. The 200 million somebody was going to hustle with pocket and get catch. I don't talk about that. Now let's turn to more disasters from Jagdeo that is taking every Guyanese beyond the graveyard other than himself and a few others 
who are benefiting in this country. I want you guys to listen to me carefully because now this program starts. Barat Jagdeo did not complete the verification of 1.6 billion expiration costs from 1999 to 2017 as yet. Hear how much more wicked, nasty, and evil this man can get. I want to go step by step, one by one. Granger government approved two oil projects for seven and a half billion dollars and left office. Which Jagdale knew that he had to check and verify that figure Exxon and Guyana. Joshua, would you believe me? Jagdale did not verify that seven and a half billion US dollars knowing Guyana has a two year time limit to do so as stipulated by the Exxon contract why can anybody answer me why so he allowed Exxon to walk away with a flush Seven and a half billion US dollars. Four years, Guyana budget at the time. Just like that, without looking at one single bill. Then turn around and blame GRA for not checking it on time. I want you people to listen to him in his own words. How he blamed GRA and the promises he made in 2021 never to make this happen again. Play that tape for them to hear. We have been very disappointed that we have not been able to select a group to do the audit of the post-2017 expenditure by, by Exxon. The reason is that we did not have a strong local content. So we had two, two groups, two local groups that came in, but they were not strong enough. We want to build a capacity in Guyana to do this audit. We think our people have enormous skills, forensic skills and auditing skills, and we are looking to see if we can't have an arrangement where we have a consortium of local people come together to do part of this work, partnering with a foreign company, so we can build capacity right here in Guyana. We're disappointed that from the individual bids we've had, we have not been able to do this. So when I get back from, from um, Scotland, I've asked the minister to see if we can get together all of the groups in Guyana who have expressed interest in this to see how we can partner, they can partner with a foreign company to do this audit. We badly need to build this capacity also in GRA. GRA has been mandated to try to build a capacity to do this. But it's a disappointment because it's been quite, quite a while. Hmm. Knowing that gangster Exxon Mobil Guys, I believe Exxon, thief, minimum, two full year budget money in those two project costs alone. Just like that. But let's give Barra Jagdeo a break on that. What do you say, guys? Let's give him a break on that. Maybe the election saga confused his mind that smart man was tired yes he was tired where US billions was concerned let's see if Jagdeo tiredness wear off or it get worse Barat Jagdeo went and handed ExxonMobil the third oil project 
for nine billion U.S. dollars. Five years of Guyana's budget at the time. You hear how much money that is? Five years. Granger 2 projects was seven and a half billion U.S. Jagde 1. 1. 9 billion U.S. Now you guys got to hear this. He went and hired a questionable woman and give her 45 days to review and double check that 9 billion U.S. A project this size, uncle, would take a team of oil exports in the field no less than two years to do a proper review. Jack Dale give a lady or that lady 45 days then approve the 9 billion the very next day. What was Jack Dale's motive for doing something like that to the people of this country? Can anyone here help me? Would you accept let me ask you guys this. Would you accept a plan from a contractor for build a house for you with a $9 million cost? Just like that? Without having it checked? That the materials, brother, the materials he's using is of good quality and he ain't overcharging you with the price he hand you? Or you can just take them like that, like a donkey and pay. Huh? Man, if a carpenter building a little shed for you, you don't got to satisfy yourself that the man not hunching you with the materials and the cars. Not true, man? Well, this bright man we have named Jack Dale hire the woman who never involved in anything like this and give her four to five days to hand him a report and he approve it the next day. To God Almighty, what is this man doing to Guyana and all of us there? Now I want you guys to hear the second aspect of this story Guyanese must know. Jagdo approved the third project and Exxon started working. Knowing fully well that Guyana has a two-year time limit to check the bills for that project as set out in the contract with Exxon. Far above, you got to help me. You all know, that man, Jack Dale, allowed the time to pass and did not check or double check a single cent of those bills. Four years of Guyana's budget just vanish into Exxon's pocket. Whether they spend two or three billion dollars, them pocket nine billion US dollars. More than hmm, two times the debt we living with since independence. Are you believe this thing? Hmm? Are you telling me if this man should be anywhere close to Exxon Mobil and our pockets? Hold on, guys. Hold on. Hold on. Is this the man you listen to just now? That say when he comes back from Scotland, he will get the right people, the right team, to ensure that what happened with the seven and a half billion will never happen again? Huh? Let me play it back for you people, man. You forget what I just said there, man. Play it back for me, man. We have been very disappointed that we have not been able to select a group to do the audit of the post-2017 expenditure. 
by, by Exxon. The reason is that we did not have a strong local content. So we had two, two groups, two local groups that came in, but they were not strong enough. We want to build a capacity in Guyana to do this audit. We think our people have enormous skills, forensic skills and auditing skills, and we are looking to see if we can't have an arrangement where we have a consortium of local people come together to do part of this work, partnering with a foreign company, so we can build capacity right here in Guyana. We're disappointed that from the individual bids we've had, we have not been able to do this. So when I get back from, from um, Scotland, I've asked the minister to see if we can get together all of the groups in Guyana who have expressed interest in this to see how we can partner, they can partner with a foreign company to do this audit. We badly need to build this capacity also in GRA. GRA has been mandated to try to build a capacity to do this. But it's a disappointment because it's been quite, quite a while. Mm -hmm. You heard him? That was 2021 when he didn't check Granger 2 project. He went and approved the third project and didn't put anybody in place to check that. We are in 2023, uncle, and no one has been put in place this oil gone done. If he's still there, and nothing will be put in place to give Guyana anything. You know, we are not in danger. We are at death's door with this man. This man, Barajagbio. Jagbio. You heard how soft and smooth, with a pitiful expression, he delivered himself there. As if Guyana couldn't do better at the time. But he will set everything right. Now, what did he put in place for that, poor, that third project? That he owned and controlled from the beginning. Absolutely worse than what he did with Granger 1 and 2. Where do we go from here? With this man. A man who promised so much changes and abused down the coalition. You have another video there, could you? Could you play that promise we made? Take off. They sold us out to the foreigners. The oil companies, every time there is a find out there, our people should should be sad because nothing comes our way. We are gonna renegotiate those contracts because that's not what we had in mind. When we were in the early days, we were coaxing the people to go along. They, they came into office, three billion barrels of proven reserves, and then gave up um, a zero royalty, no taxes, no ring fencing. That was when he was in opposition. The Granger government sold us out to the foreigners. We will renegotiate those contracts. Zero royalty, no taxes, no ring fencing. He went into office and handed the third project to ExxonMobil. Anything changed, Uncle and Auntie? We're still living with zero royalty, no taxes, and the fence disappear. Let me remind you people about that fence. That fence in that third project, uncle. Without that fence, Jack Bear is allowing ExxonMobil to eat and fatten themselves with an additional nine billion American dollars, which he knows. And on top of that, he's now hiding all of ExxonMobil expenses from the Guyanese people. Is who selling out this country, man? Huh? Can Jack Dale do anything worse than what he did with that 9 billion US 
that third project? Should this man stay in that office another hour, man? Hmm? Hmm. Joshua, let's turn to another page of Barat Jagdeo's book. This king that is in charge of the oil industry hmm, went again, brother. Listen to me carefully. Went again. And handed the fourth oil project <laughs> to ExxonMobil. This time for 10 billion US, an additional 1 billion more than the third one. Guess what he did? Hired the same questionable woman. This time he gave her 60 days. To check that project plan of 10 billion American dollars. I got to repeat for some of your head, uncle and auntie. A project this size would take a team of oil experts in the field no less than two years to do a proper review. Jack, they will give the lady 60 days, then approve that project. Right away. How are you like that? Hmm? <laughs> Here again, I am asking you people, what was Jack Dale's motive for not hiring real exports and give them the freedom to review thoroughly this fourth project plan? Instead, he gave the woman again, who knows little or nothing about what she was hired and paid for to do. Can somebody help me? Hmm? Now, I want you guys to listen to the second stage of the 10 billion US, which Barat Jagdeo knows that Guyana got two year time limit. As per the contract to go through the bills to see how much eggs on teeth out the 10 billion dollar. You guys know, <laughs> you know, Auntie, this man Barra Jagdeo did the exact thing that he did with the first two projects and the third project. He allowed the time to expire. Yes, he allowed the time to expire. If, Ex if Exxon spent two or three billion US on that project, they walk away with 10 billion in their pocket. Are you seeing a pattern here? Hmm? Exxon then collect with them four projects. 26 and a half billion American dollars. When them must only spend six or seven billion. If so much. But pocket 20 billion free money that they are already taking out from we oil. What is this called? Pre contract cost. Why is Jack Dale doing this to the starving nation? And why would you people be so silent and allow he and Exxon to reap and rape this land in this style or fashion? Is this the man that says we have to build capacity? We have to get and put people in place to monitor, to scrutinize, to audit, and check what Exxon doing. Is where are they, brother? Hmm? Them people still there in Guyana? Joshua? Them people we put together still there in Guyana? Play back the tape for me, man. Let people hear this man again, man. 
we have been very disappointed that we have not been able to select a group to do the audit of the post 2017 expenditure by, by Exxon. The reason is that we did not have a strong local content. So we had two, two groups, two local groups that came in, but they were not strong enough. We want to build a capacity in Guyana to do this audit. We think our people have enormous skills, forensic skills and auditing skills, and we are looking to see if we can't have an arrangement where we have a consortium of local people come together to do part of this work, partnering with a foreign company, so we can build capacity right here in Guyana. We're disappointed that from the individual bids we've had, we have not been able to do this. So when I get back from, from um, Scotland, I've asked the minister to see if we can get together all of the groups in Guyana who have expressed interest in this to see how we can partner, they can partner with a foreign company to do this audit. We badly need to build this capacity also in GRA. GRA has been mandated to try to build a capacity to do this. But it's a disappointment because it's been quite, quite a while. It's a disappointment. More than six years budget again on the fourth project gone. Money that could have already tripled the Guyanese people's salaries. Build all the roads. Give you free electricity without blackouts. Clean water to drink in which nobody should be struggling with cost of living today. This man, Barrett Jagdale, just handing away tens of US billions and collecting from ExxonMobil handouts and cash grants. And cricket sponsorship for your fools who love cricket. <laughs> Far above, you have to help me. You really got to help me to understand what's happening in this country. Don't help the Guyanese people. Them don't want help. Them are accustomed to living the way they are. They don't need help. Them love the politicians more than they love life itself and believe the promises they make. Mm -hmm. Man making promises, you know. Play back the promise, let them hear the promise, man. <laughs> Take off. They sold us out to the foreigners. The oil companies, every time there is a find out there, our people should should be sad because nothing comes our way. We are going to renegotiate those contracts because that's not what we had in mind. When we were in the early days, we were coaxing the people to go along. They, they came into office, three billion barrels of proven reserves, and then gave up um, a zero royalty, no taxes, no ring fencing. Uncle, you know the man handed Exxon Mobil, that Ford project on a platter. Without that fence. Allowing Exxon to eat an additional 10 billion US, which he knows. You heard him there. Ring fencing. I believe if y'all didn't hear that with your own ears just now. Every Guyanese would have said, Glen Lal, you're lying on that man. And on top of that, he still continues, uncle, to hide all the expenses from the Guyanese people's eyes. How hell like that? <laughs> oh boy. I you think that is all? Uncle and auntie, you think that is all? I you not got a clue who these people are you staying are your middle fingers for? Are in both camps. 
more so Barajagdio. Let's turn to another page in Barajagdio book. Let me show you what he's doing. He went even further than the third and the fourth project and approved the fifth oil project. In a very sneaky fashion. Not for nine billion dollar, not for ten billion dollar, but for thirteen point seven billion US. This one is more than seven years Guyana budget and more than three times the debt Guyana living with. Are you hearing me, man? I don't think you would believe this one here. I don't think you'd believe this one. You owe the bank four billion and a man coming in your yard fetching out 12.7 billion in goods, throwing a few pennies at you. Which year, tell me brother, which year you would not pay off the bank the four billion dollars you, you got? Hmm? That is what the 65 MPs in this country allowing Barat Jardel to do. Not only to them, but to all Guyana. Project after project. Billions of US upon billions of American dollars. You know, uncle, what Barat Jardel that superstar 12 years as president and now vice president in charge of the oil did did again on that same fifth project y'all could guess oh right, well, i'm still or right, i still want to tell you he went again and higher this time around a set of long years and give them a short time again to review that 12.7 billion American dollars and approve the project just like the two, the three, the four. How I like that one, man. He did not change anything. He did not get any taxes. Same zero royalty. And definitely, he did not put the fence in the fifth project, allowing ExxonMobil to eat an additional 12.7 billion US out of the project. And still hiding ExxonMobil expenses from our eyes. What are the leaders of this land eh? doing to this country, uncle? Why are we allowing Barat Jagdale to do this to us? Can somebody help me? Somebody tell me? I really need someone to help me understand because I didn't went far in school. Can somebody help me to understand? I really, really need help. Guyana sits with four billion deaths since independence. I am repeating that. Can't pay, can't eat and live proper in this country. Because we still borrowing year go year come. And here this financial guru Barajagdeo handing on a platter 40 billion plus American dollars to ExxonMobil just like that. Without a fuss. And Guyanese clapping and gyrating joyfully at the cricket ground. 
And many of them hungry there. Are you helping me to understand what's happening in this country, no, brother? Now, I talk about the first two, I talk about three, I talk about four, I talk about the fifth project, right? Let me, let me go a little deeper into Jack Dale's book and see what's in there. I am seeing Exxon racing ahead with public meetings to get Jack Dale's approval for the sixth oil project. You want to hear the cost? That cost also went up. Every project keep going up. That one hmm, went up from 12.7 billion for the fifth to 12.9 billion US. Maybe is it 200 million US? Them boys was going to snatch out. Them they, they decided they got throw it on on the sixth project. <laughs> Oh, Uncle, oh. We have to wait and see if Jack Day will approve it. When he will approve, approve it and how he will approve it, hmm, I will come back to you people on that one. You hear that? The sixth project is on the horizon. Exxon is doing public meetings around the country with it. For 12.9 billion American dollars. I want to better you. My last dollar. What Jack Dale did on the third project. What Jack Dale did on the fourth project. What Jack Dale did on the fifth project. He's going to do the same. On the sixth oil project. In which ExxonMobil will not only walk away with 12.9 billion US of our oil just like that, but Jack Day will allow another 12.9 billion to go into Exxon's bank account without that same fence. How much are you betting? Anybody got money to bet? That same fence. He will not put in again in that sixth project. And he will also continue hiding the expenses <laughs> and get nothing more out of that sixth project. Guyana will sit with the same zero royalty, zero taxes, and no ring fencing on it. So we will be looking. We were looking at over 50 billion American dollars on those project costs plus another 50 billion US without the ring fence being put in place on any one of them. So what we have there, brothers, a clean 100 billion American dollars will come out from our oil. And by then, Guyana debt will climb maybe double to 8 billion. And the Guyanese people will get 100,000 cash grant once a year. Mm -hmm. And every Guyanese will continue to live in blackouts. Continue to drink that stink water. Pay more for food items. And the struggle, the daily struggle, will continue. Joshua, yes, you think I finished there? Mm -hmm. Huh? Exxon, don't announce they are working on the seventh oil project. Don't announce them working on the seventh oil project, which. If Jack Dale is still in that office, yeah, man, he will hand them on a, on a golden platter. If I allow him. <laughs> that man, Barat Jack Dale, uncle, and Vikram Barat, 
The same Vikram Bharatu never hold a press conference in his life. Should these two men still be sitting in, do, in, in their offices for another second? Huh? I have nothing more to say tonight. But would like to know what you will do. And I also want to hear what you have to say about what you guys have heard me say tonight.